Hello, my name is Yamna and I'm feeling crafty. Uh, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel where I talk all about sewing. Today's video uh, is going to be all about everything that I made in the month of October. And I'm staring at a big pile of uh, paints right in front of me. Oh, it took me a while to make this video. I don't know if you, if you, as well are a uh, sewing youtuber i wonder is this your experience as well that you find three million excuses not to make these videos like oh i have time to record today but my hair isn't washed my sewing room is a mess the clothes are not okay and you know what i've had so much love um over the last um couple of weeks on youtube and on instagram um that I am just done letting stupid things stop me from talking to you guys because I love it. So here I am. The hair is not washed. I'm slightly disheveled because I'm just back from yoga class. <laughs> the sewing room. <laughs> I just found <laughs> a tidy-ish corner <laughs> where I can focus the camera. So uh, actually, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's, it's all like you're not here for how I look you're here for sewing so let's get to it <laughs> okay um so first of all uh first two things I made are my uh fiber mood kika dresses I made two of them this was my wearable muslin and this was the final version. Now, I'm not going to insert videos of me wearing them or anything like that because I have a separate video uh, featuring both of them. Um, it's actually a pattern review and uh, I have received some amazing love uh, from fellow YouTuber uh, who's so like Dottie. Uh, she actually mentioned my channel like my fairy YouTube godmother. So thank you very much uh, for sending people my way and for uh, appreciating the time I took in recording my um, pattern review. Um, I must say, I love these dresses. I actually stopped myself. Like I have a pretty big wardrobe, okay? So I could not repeat outfits for months. But um, I have to stop myself from wearing these two because they are so comfortable. I don't know what it is. Is it my age? Is it the time of the year? Is it the fact that I put on some weight? I just am so drawn to volume recently. It's kind of uncharted territory. So this is um, the Fiber Mood um, Kika love 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 them if you want to know more about them i'm going to link uh, my pattern review in the description just dropped everything on the floor um second thing so there's only three garments well there's a few more that could be a garment uh category so um the other one is uh, another fiber mood pattern uh, and that is um, Fiber Mood Mika. So this is the pattern. Uh, Fiber Mood Mika. Uh, it's a sweatshirt. And let me just tell you all about the sizes. So it goes from a size... Uh, this goes in centimeters. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, so uh, from bust of 76 up to bust of 146 centimeters. Um, but the finished uh, garment measurements for the for the largest size of uh, bust of 146 uh, is actually 160. I found it quite roomy. I went by my um, body measurements um, and it's very oversized. I love I love oversized as I said I'm into all things uh, volume uh, at the moment. It wasn't 100% the vision I had for this garment but I love it. It's brilliant and um, it's long enough that I actually can wear it with leggings which isn't really something that I do. I'm um, definitely plus size so I uh, like to wear a sweatshirt with just leggings 
is a little bit of out of my comfort zone. But my daughter, who's 12, convinced me I can, so I'll roll with that. So she's lovely. Uh, I have gone for the for the triangle thingy. I'm going to bring you closer because I'm very proud of this triangle thingy. Okay. So now this isn't cover stitch. I was quite. I still don't really know how to use my cover stitch uh, machine very well. So I have just used uh, one of the overlock uh, stitches on my faf on my domestic machine uh, to finish that, and I just went very slow and this went very accurate so what you do is you stitch that on uh, on top of you don't it, this isn't a cutout if you know what i mean uh it's not sewn in it's just sewn on top of the sweatshirt and then you uh, they tell you to zigzag it but i decided to went crazy with my decorative stitches because why the hell do i have them right um so um i also used a contrast um well it's not really contrast it kind of blends in uh, really nicely with my fabric but uh, this is um coughing um fab uh, fabric that i had and when i cut because it comes in a tube so when i cut out my cuffs and the waistband and the uh, neck band i had like a long strip left that wasn't really usable so i actually cut uh, these so i don't know if you can see those so in the raglan i did kind of a flat um piping situation um but i cut the fabric on uh cross grain so there's no stretch in it so kind of stabilizes that seam as well uh, a little bit so I'm very happy with that. So this is my uh, Fiber Mood Mika uh, and I am very happy with her. I have since um, adjusted my pattern. Um, I pretty much went, went down uh, a size and I cropped it a little bit. And I intended to make another version of this. This was always uh, a wearable twirl. So I want to make another version a little bit cropped, not completely cropped uh, that it hits the top of my waistband, but a little bit uh, cropped and I want to make a matching elemental, uh, like a pencil skirt by uh, Soho 7, um, like a midi length pencil uh, skirt and a matching top. Mm, can't wait for that. So that's the plan. Okay. Uh, so I'll move on to the less of a clothing theme. So next thing uh, I made, um, I was very insmi inspired by Adam Sauce. Uh, he makes absolutely amazing things and he's very good at quilting and patchworking and stuff. So he recently had uh, featured these cozy slippers. Um, by a link the tutorial uh, below because it's actually a free pattern um i made this was my first pair this was a kind of a wearable uh 12 i the they only come in one size which is a uh, uk size five um i am um size seven so i was trying to gauge the size so i um lengthened uh, the uh, the pattern actually adam um ha has a great suggestion how to do that i just extended the the this part the heel part of the pattern a little bit um they came um they came out a little small so they my daughter actually wears them um but um i didn't have the right things to make it kind of cushiony <laughs> so these are a bit lightweight a bit too lightweight for m my biggish frame so but she's very happy with them so that was the first pair that i made and um, then i made this pair um which matches a cushion and uh, that i made for my armchair so i feel very spunky <laughs> wearing these um they are still a little lightweight. I put uh, foam and tons of uh, wadding in, in them. And I also upcycled an uh, old pair of um, 
jeans, my husband's jeans to make the soles. Jeans actually, um, it works fantastically for the soles because it's not very uh, slippery. So I absolutely love these. Um, I wear them uh, all the time. The fabric came from one of the, uh, not charm packs, um, fat quarter bundles from Aldi. That's where I got the fabric, but this is actually off cuts because uh, I used the fabric originally to make myself a lovely um, quilted cushion to, to, to go on my, I think I might have featured the cushion in my September makes. So if you go back to that, you'll see the cushion on my beautiful armchair. Um, so these are to go with it. And I made actually a third pair uh, and I think I, I nailed that one. Um, in terms of the the weight of the wadding on the inside but i won't be able to show them to you because they were a birthday gift um to my neighbor um but they were pretty much the same color scheme as these um now one thing about this pattern um you really need a strong sewing machine to be able to um, sew through all this bulk. I actually tried this pattern um, potentially um, to see if it would be suitable for um, one of my sewing classes, but um, uh, I tried it on a machine that I use for classes and um, the machine hated it. <laughs> my faff, on the other hand, not a bother. This machine as long as I have the right needle on it, it will sew through uh, just about anything. So uh, easy breezy. If you have um, kind of a higher wrench of a machine, this um, this uh, will be very easy. It's actually a very quick and easy project. Um, the only um, difficulty of it is the... This should be a thumbnail, huh? What do you think? <laughs> Um, so these are the slippers. So they were no go for my sewing class and because we were upcycling sweaters uh, to make pumpkins, um, I had some sweaters lying around so I thought, hmm, how about we just make upcycled sweater um, slippers. So that's when I made these. And this is a pattern by um, Jen Howell. Um, uh, I think her channel is Make It Simple. Uh, she does a lot of upcycling um, projects. Uh, the pumpkins that I made last month, uh, they were her um, project as well. And um, I, I, she's, that's just right up my alley. I'm very much into sustainability and upcycling and all that jazz. So um, this was the first pair I made. And um, if you want to make these, my advice is, so, so Jen in her tutorial tells you to um, um, stitch, so there is a seam in the top of the slippers, which is um, at the heel there, and this is one piece. So you stitch it uh, at the back and then you attach the sole um, um, and then the lining, because they're fully lined, they're very nicely finished on the inside. I really like that. Um, so you attach the sole uh, of the um, of the slippers and the lining and then you turn it right side out and then you attach the binding. Now I found it very tricky, not because of the bulk, but it was just hard to get under my machine and uh, effectively what happened with this pair, uh, the, the band which is made of um, a fleece. Um, I just stretched it out so much they don't uh, fit on my feet anymore. Um, they kind of fall off. So um, learning uh, experience. Uh, so I'm grateful for the opportunity to learn. So for the next pair, which is this, um, what I have done, I have uh, cut the top of the slipper, I stitched the back, then attached the binding, and then, uh, so I just shuffled the order of uh, of things in the tutorial. So I jumped from um, 
step um, I think three to step nine to attach the binding and then I went back to step four which is attaching the sole of the slippers and the lining so just change the order and you'll be fine so so you uh, construct the top then put the binding and then attach the sole of the slippers and again very quick and easy easy piece this is actually 100% uh, wool uh, this fabric this was hand knitted by uh, my um, very good friend's mom and the um, the binding um, it's actually you uh, attach it to the inside and then I there's two uh, options you can attach it to the outside and and then flip it to the inside but i found that a little too tricky so what i did i, I touched it to the inside and flipped it to the outside and just zigzagged uh, along the way and if it went a little wonky i just trimmed it and it looks perfection uh, fleece is very forgiving it doesn't fray so uh, you can do that uh, easily and they have a little tab for you to use when you're trying to shimmy into them i am super happy with these um because they don't take a lot of fabric uh, and this uh, this fabric was actually um one of my daughter's dress that was hand knitted didn't fit uh, either of my um daughters anymore and i held on to it because it's wool and it's you know it was handmade by someone and do you have that as well like if it was made by um it was if it's handmade it's almost feels like you need to employ a adoption agency <laughs> to get rid of things i don't know if i'm alone on that so um anyway i held on to the dress um because i'm a hoarder <laughs> i grew up very poorly in a very poor country so i drew out nothing <laughs> um so i was very happy to be able to to make these but i have um um so i think i used the back of the dress and i still have the front of the dress so Mm, Christmas gifts I'm thinking um so that's that uh oh and then um I uh, made these little pouches for one of my classes um so I have made few of them just to develop the pattern and this actually is a, a tutorial on my channel so if you like these little pouches i'm kind of preparing for um for christmas so um also preparing for my turn in the uh lovely uh, uh so um a gift a, a gift of a uh, november Ooh, i can't remember the name of the challenge anyway it's a lovely challenge uh that's uh so like dotty and adam souls uh, are hosting and i am going to be one of the vloggers included in this challenge and my video is coming up on saturday so this um this little pouch will feature in that video um so i uh, i i have a little bit of a different angle for my uh for my video and all will be revealed in my um saturday um a video for the challenge so watch this space anyway so i made few of those and if you're interested in making one of your own i have a tutorial on my channel and i'll link that in the description down below so that's um that and the last thing the most adorable thing is a jar of love i have made uh, oh sorry no there, that's not the last thing uh but um that's one of the 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 things i um I see a parenting coach uh, once every uh, month or so, or maybe less, depending on what I need. And um, something lovely came up uh, in it for my daughter, who's 12. So it's kind of a bit of an awkward age. And it's kind of awkward for us to show her love because, you know, embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of an informal way of showing love to to people around you and i didn't want to for her to feel that oh this is for you and for you only and um you know like you're so special because you know they, at that age they kind of want to be like everyone else so this is actually a jar of love for the whole family so how this works is i actually uh hot glued <laughs> and um 
a notepad on, on top, you grab one of those, you write what you love about a person and you write their name on, on top and you put it in and it's almost full. We're having really great fun with it. I highly recommend it. You don't have to go this fancy because I, I used my Cricut machine to uh, put this on it. Like you, you, you know, you can just have a jar. Like you really don't need to do anything. You can just, you know, Sharpie on, jar of love on it and you're golden. I highly recommend it because it's, it's you know, sometimes uh, it can be difficult to uh, show love to people around us. Um, like, you know, in verbally <laughs> is the word I'm looking for. So this is something you can just do, you know, in, private very privately and it's like sending a little love letters we're loving it at the moment anyway so how i did this um i just uh, stitched on sorry i'll just slide off the uh, the band so what it is is just a strip of fabric and i lined it with a bit of minky and you will see where that came from um uh, because it's a scrap for my next project um then I, what I have done, I stitched on, this is a fold over elastic uh, because I, I want this to be washable and also reusable because, you know, I'm a very clumsy person. So this jar mightn't survive my clumsiness. So in case it doesn't, um, you know, this stretches and can attach to different sizes of uh, jars, if you know what I mean. So when I was uh, stitching on, the the fold over elastics i also um can you see this um so i also stitched on a little loop and that is to accommodate how fancy i thought of everything oh my goodness usually it takes me making a project about three times to kind of nail it but this time so um this little uh, loop there um is to accommodate the pen because you know like i don't want anyone to have any excuses that oh i couldn't write anything because i couldn't find the pen i couldn't find the paper excuse me everything is here the jar is here the notepad is here the pen is here no excuses anyway so um so what what i did i just um sandwiched them in uh to this side and then <coughs> I left this side open, I flipped everything right side uh, up and I just tucked the ends of the elastic and top stitched. I was going to top stitch all around but then I thought you know what actually it looks neater not top stitch so I, I only have a row of top stitching here and that's on the back so uh, so I kind of went back and forth a little bit you can see the, the stitching is a little thicker um where the elastics are just to uh, reinforce them so that's my jar of love how cute i know a little tree hoggy uh, and stuff but i love it now for the final item prepare yourself for a huge amount of cuteness okay okay i had to stand up to for you to fully appreciate uh my last creation so my older daughter's teacher just had a baby, his first baby. He's a baby himself. He's just had a baby. How old he must be? Oh my goodness. Anyway, so I made a baby blanket. I have used a charm pack. So there's 42 squares. I used every single one of them in this little quilt. And then I bordered it with some polka dots. And you can recognize the minky fabric from my jar of love. Uh, I backed it with the uh, minky. I put, um, I think these are Kali and Shins, or they are either Little Rosy Cheeks uh, labels or Kali and the Machine. I apologize if I got this wrong. The, these are the only two labels I have ever purchased. So it's either. So it says you are loved and I also embroidered the baby's name and the date of birth. Uh, my faf can do letters. So I just did that on my faf and how cute. And if this wasn't cute enough, um, 
I made a bag to <laughs> to package it in. I hate disposable things, okay? I could have wrapped it in tissue paper, but uh, painful, painful, trees dying. Uh. So I made this and I uh, cut that on my Cricut. Um, all the places you go, uh, a quote from Dr. Seuss, because we all love talk Dr. Seuss. So this fabric is uh, kind of matching the border of the quilt and I, oh, can you see, can you see, there's a pocket on the inside and this is my, my own label, Feeling Crafty there. So that they know it's handmade. We can look it up and see. Uh, so I made the straps uh, kind of longer. This is just twill tape. This is something I do in my bags. This is just twill tape, but twill tape uh, tends to be fairly flimsy. So I double it. And I don't know if you can see the stitching. So there is a row of stitching on one side and the other. So um, just to make them a little stronger. How cute. Huh? Okay, so that's all. Um, it was, do uh, you know what? When I was gathering things, uh, to feature in this video i thought mm, i didn't make much uh, this month it's just because i think all oh, garments i only made three garments in four weeks come on um and then you know when i make other kind of a crafty bits for my classes um i usually don't count them by why don't i they're they're like they take as much time so sometimes Anyway, so this was a fairly productive month. Uh, you are getting loads from me this week. As I said, like I let stupid things um, stop me from recording these videos because my hair wasn't washed. Like how stupid. Um, so um, sorry about that or not sorry. Uh, it's I'm actually not sorry because it's a discovery I made for me and I will no longer um, let that stop me. So you have a new tutorial from me this week for these uh, little bags. You are getting this video and then you're getting another one on Saturday uh, for the challenge. So I hope you're not going to be too sick of me. And if you are, I might just give you a break for a week or something, I'll see. Okay, so that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I give you a little uh, inspiration for a few projects. I hope you're going to check out my own tutorials. My tutorials, they're not uh, like very professionally filmed. I don't have all the right equipment, the tripods, the lights and all that jazz. And for a, the longest time, again, I let that stop me from from posting them because, oh, I thought, you know what, who is going to follow them because they're not so well made. But people love them. I think even though I don't have the professional equipment, I don't have the all the right staff, I still have something to say. I still have something to offer. I still have ideas that are worth uh, showing. So I, I'll just keep doing these uh, tutorials because you know what? I, I'm not a professional filmmaker. I'm fairly professional at sewing. I'm fairly professional at coming up with lovely upcycled or not ideas. And I'll, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing because the sewing is, the, is that's my expertise, okay? So the fact that I don't have the, 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 the other expertise like nailed on the head, uh, you guys seem to enjoy them anyway, so. I'll just keep going. Okay, I just realized, uh, I think this might be a third time I'm saying goodbye to you guys. So this is it, okay? So thank you very much. And I hope you will come back on Saturday to check out my um, um, gift a November video. Um, and I hope you find a little bit of time in your life for creativity this week. Bye.